talking, I'm thinking about, uh, I just gave my students a midterm. Um, I'm thinking about, uh, you know, I, I grade the midterm and I see all of these things that come up in the grading where uh, you know, th there's this misconception I, I wouldn't have imagined and, and they're really struggling with this. So, you know, like, to, to give a concrete example, they when they're reasoning about an algorithm that develops an optimal solution, they're having trouble seeing the difference between what's a solution and what's an optimal solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so, mm -hmm. is there anything sort of specifically in the context of an exam uh, that, that you could recommend for a reflection activity for students? Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of buzzwords for you. Uh, exam wrapper. I don't know. Have you heard of exam wrappers before? And I, I mean like wrapping around a piece of candy, not like Ah, did that come up on the tomorrow's prof list? I feel like I should have heard uh, it. it. It might. It might have. Uh, I don't. I mean, I, I'll be honest. I haven't heard of it until earlier this year when I really started diving into reflection. Um, so exactly what you were describing doing as you were going through the exams, as you were grading, you know, looking at, well, you know, what's what am I seeing as misconceptions? What's happened? What am I? What am I? Um, what am I learning? about my students' understanding of these concepts. You're, one thing that exam wrappers does is get the students to engage in that activity themselves. So the exam wrapper is a relatively simple idea. There are lots of variations, but what you do is you have the student um, take their graded exam. And we're not talking about a huge essay. Just write a little bit, a few phrases about what they realized they were having trouble with. What they were struggling with, what they you know, more than just I got the question seven and thirteen wrong, but more conceptually, like I'm having trouble with this whole, you know, notion of an optimal solution. And then again, a follow-up question that says, well, what are you going to do about it? You know, uh, you've got a cumulative exam coming up at the end of the term. How are you going to spend a little time addressing this misconception uh, going forward? <clears throat> and um, and that I think you know is a nice example of a relatively lightweight thing that you can do. To not just you know why stop at your as an educator understanding what's going wrong or going well in your students' learning. Have them involved in that process as well. And the more habitual that becomes, hopefully, you know, the ideal case for the, the blue sky scenario is that students will go forth after your class, and every exam that you take. They'll do their own little personal exam and, uh, and they'll become you know, the, the mythical uh, um, unicorn-like creature that we call a lifelong learner. Right? I mean, I mean, I, I'm joking, but I, I, I really do. That's, I, I mean, people may think it's idealistic, but that's where we, we set the bar, I and mean, that's what we're hoping to achieve: is to make these kinds of reflection activities so habitual for these students. Um, that, uh, that they're able to realize the benefits of all throughout their careers. And I think that's particularly important in engineering, particularly in computer science, um, where you know, everybody talks. It's, a, it's part of the folklore. Everyone understands that you have to keep learning mm -hmm. computer science. Perhaps the underlying fundamentals don't change from year to year, but everything moves so fast, right? That's what we're saying. 